So I really do think the damage has been done with the Battlefront Classic Collection. I don't know how they managed to ruin what should have been the easiest home run possible, but here we are. The Battlefront Classic Collection honestly had an update just recently addressing a lot of the issues that plagued the game on launch. However, there were a few issues with this, and I dare say the way that this game has released has been critical to the game's player base. Now, just in case you missed it or potentially hadn't worked out what was wrong with the Battlefront Classic Collection, let me break it down for you really quick. On release day, everyone was extremely excited to jump in and play through their childhood memories of Battlefront Classic and Battlefront 2 from 2005. However, imagine the disappointment when everyone found out that it was a bug riddled mess. From cutscenes missing in the Battlefront 2 campaign, which arguably makes up half of the campaign, to the game crashes left and right, and then probably the worst part was the online servers, which was what I believe has caused irreversible damage to the game. See, the thing about releasing a 20 year old game is that's just it, it's 20 years old. People aren't looking to play it for the graphics or crazy gameplay. There's usually one or two reasons that someone would buy something like this, and that's either the nostalgia having grown up with the games, or the developer has added something new to the re-release. And in this case, it was probably the latter. In this case, Aspire Media promised huge 64 player online multiplayer to come to the game, which to be honest, would have been awesome. And to my knowledge, this is what most people were excited for, but I could tell at least from the comment section as well. But of course, with the curse of the Battlefront franchise, things never go to plan. On launch day, there were three available servers to play multiplayer, each holding 64 players. Now, I'm not great at math, but with thousands of people on each platform looking to play the Battlefront Classic Collection and mostly interested in the multiplayer, I somehow think that that fewer servers isn't quite going to cut it. And guess what? I was right. Now, yes, Aspire did come out and say they saw critical errors when the game released and started to go live, and were working on making a fix. But not only did the multiplayer crash constantly, but the single player was missing content, all flight controls were permanently inverted, controller support was buggy, sensitivity wouldn't adjust, and basically everything that could go wrong did go wrong. A few days later, Aspire managed to chew out an update and fix quite a few of the issues, which would have been great, however, we had another problem. The update went through on PC and seemingly stabilized a few things, which is great. However, the console patch took over a week after the PC patch dropped to release for those consoles. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm buying a game that's 20 years old and it's unplayable for the first 10 to 15 days after I buy it, I'm pretty sure I'm going to refund it. And that's exactly what people Refunds left, right, and center, people leaving, returning back to Battlefront 2 2017, or whatever other games they may have been playing. And now finally the console patch has rolled out, but there's nobody left playing the game. If there is one thing we've learned over the past few years, it's that Star Wars fans will instantly destroy anything wrong with their precious franchise, and that is no different here. Take Battlefront 2 2017, for example. A lot of people still think it's a pay to win game, even though that was removed like a month into the game's release. I do fear that the damage is done now though, the Battlefront Classic Collection has basically empty servers every day that I try and log in and look for matches, but unfortunately it's to no avail. There's just nobody playing this right now, at least on PC. In saying that though, being the hopeful person that I am, I still tried to make the most out of this game. And what I thought I would do was attempt to 100% complete the game, which I thought logically shouldn't have too many issues because the entire trophy or achievement list can be completed offline. And instant action worked, the campaign after they added the cutscenes back was fine, so realistically this should be achievable, right? Wrong. So <laughs> I set myself a goal to 100% this game and boy was that a mistake. I played through all of the campaigns, done challenges multiple times, grinded for hours and hours on medals, just for it to not track half of what I had done, which you can imagine upset me and wound me up a wall. Now, if they ever fix the achievements not tracking, then sweet, I'll make a video on 100% completion and what that looked like to me. But for now, we're shit out of it. I can't do this because my medals won't track and that means that stops me from doing some of the achievements. 
Again, what could have been an incredible release for fans of Star Wars games ended up being a flop. So from here, I'm not really sure what to do. I may start experiencing or experimenting with other content, or we may just have to continue to make Battlefront 2 2017 content until people no longer want to watch. Hopefully the future of Star Wars games like Star Wars Outlaws and whatever else is on the horizon doesn't see the same fate as what these recent Star Wars games have.